My favorite song from the Lana album is called The Greatest. Kind of started with this progression. A lot of times the way her and I will write is just kind of play guitar and she'll start singing things and just sort of move from there. So it just started with this. Uh... What I think is kind of a English sounding progression. Sort of regal. That's how we started it. Um, and then, you know, from there the song started to get written. But in terms of recording it, the first thing I laid down was kind of like I was saying about that album, like a lot of it lived with 12 strings, so just these. Hand hard 12 strings just for this album became a huge touch point. They just sort of lived on the outsides and just made everything sparkle. And then put some six string acoustics in. Starting a little bit of a sloppy Jeff Lynne wall of sound. And then it started to get interesting because I wanted to sort of like wiggle and be odd and I had this electric sitar. Going through a space echo. And that just kind of made it like a little like special and odd. So that kind of became the backbone and then from there it was Really driving it is the room. And then I remember I recorded these pianos just to click and started doing these sort of like Beatles runs. Draw all overdubs. And the song really production wise started to come to life. I'll show you where. You can hear someone in the room. This part right here. That line, when we got that, I think, remember that being like a, oh shit, that, that's, that's really cool. And I think one of the first things we did was have Lana. Just have her kind of mirror that line just because it was such a special line. And then, so like, I remember like hearing that and thinking, and we were talking like, well, that starts to sound like, little strings and things. That starts to sound like you want to hear like this off-kilter string world following it. So then it went to a Mellotron. So that's like this little Mellotron stack that I started to build, which eventually a friend played real violins and cellos on it. One thing I love to do is mix the Mellotron with the real strings, because then you kind of get this odd space where everything's existing, which sounds like this. Tiny accordion in there. <laughs> so those were the initial elements, these acoustics, pianos, and sort of twinkly strings. The way that everything on this album got arranged and put together was just all right there. You know, so like I said, like this started with, you know, that sort of main progression, which is how, this, how the song began to be written. And then went to the piano, where this line came from. Started to Add horns, Mellotrons. Real strings. So then it starts to get sort of arranged and orchestrated a little bit.
So now what was just a guitar part is... It's starting to actually like sound very unique and like it lives in this weird dreamy space. All that arranging is just sort of right there, just sitting at a Mellotron, sending it through things, just finding sounds that sound interesting and cool. The only strings that were added were just some mirrors of those later, which were these. These are acoustic strings. That's the Mellotron. That's the original arrangement, and so then I'll occasionally have someone just like this play the actual acoustic version. So all the arrangement happens in the room then. For this song, it was just kind of on a little bit, and then my friend Evan played the live flute too. And the idea for the flute and the horns for this song, which were actually pretty rare on this album, was just, there was like a regalness to it. Like it sounded like a death march to the end of culture. Hence her lyrics, the culture is lit and I had a ball. If this is it, I'm signing off. The whole thing is just this lament of a time gone. So it felt really interesting to have it be this like, almost like a funeral procession.